Shackleton, Scott of the Antarctic, and Rio, the coach driver from Kent. All three are intrepid explorers of frozen worlds, but only one is about to tackle the winter wipeout course. Only one stands a chance of winning the £10,000 prize, and only one will take on 19 other hopefuls on today's show. No, it's not Scott of the Antarctic. It's Rio. Let the wintry wipeout begin. Welcome to Winter Wipeout. I was very excited this morning because I got a fax. Have you seen one of these? It's very modern. I've got a cassette player too. Anyway, this fax says that tonight's show is top secret. So secret that I've been banned from reading this out. In fact, I've been banned from reading it at all. So how do I know what's in it? I don't. I, this is getting confusing. Here's what's coming up on tonight's show. Am I allowed to say that? You? The qualifier. Whoa, please let me look. Ski lift. What's going on behind there? Winter Blunderland. Oh, this just isn't fair. And the wipeout zone. Looks like it might be really exciting. Good news. I have received clearance to reveal two pieces of information about this secret edition of Winter Wipeout. One. Amanda Byram's at the top of the course. Two, she's with today's first contestant. I didn't see that coming. With me now is a lady who already has experience of long cold winters, blizzards, snowdrifts and temperatures of minus 25 degrees. I did not realise the weather was that bad in Wolverhampton, Maria. Oh, I want to please them. <laughs> well, you do have the warm hat and you've obviously got the accent. Can you do any Russian dancing? Oh, Kalinka Malinka. You, you what? And this is how we keep warm. In I love it. But in but doesn't it get faster and faster and faster and faster? <laughs> oh, I want to please them. <laughs> oh, go on. Come on, Maria. All right, ready? Ready. Yeah. <laughs> Boys, watch out. Game is on. Maria's 30 and a steel sales executive. She's made of steel. Well, that might help her with today's first obstacle. It's new. It's terrifying. It's an instant classic. Introducing the Winter Blob. The contestants must make their way to the launch position. There she goes. Okay, I've just been told this isn't the good bit. Once there, that huge drum, they call it El Gordo, is released and then, well, something happens. is brilliant! Ah, oh, look at that! I, I can't see enough of this. There is the BAFTA for best entertainment right there in the back. Oh. Now, coming from Russia, Maria is used to temperatures of minus 25, so the winter wipeout ice bath should be a doddle for her. <laughs> Splashdown complete. It's a swim to dry land, which is sort of that way. Only the fastest 12 will qualify for the next round, so she, she does need to be quick here. Mm -hmm. That's it, Maria. Yeah. Come, on, Maria. Come on, Maria. Come on, Maria. Come on, Maria. Although the next obstacle has a habit of slowing people down, it's Granny's house. I wonder what treats Granny has in store today. Come on, Maria. Oh, I don't wonder if Granny's got a chicken Kiev in the oven. Nah, prob probably not that. <laughs> it's that. You see? <laughs> Now that is a treat. It's a door in the face. Quick swim. Oh, Maria. And now Maria must climb up the stairs for a second helping of Granny. Oh, Mind Tevez. Yeah, good. No, not good. Oh. Yeah. Maria enters tough guy competitions. 
Unfortunately for her, so does Granny, UK champ over 70s. Now Maria needs to wade as quickly as her muscovite legs can carry her to the reclaimed Soviet-era travelator. Destination, Big Red Communist Party Balls. Come on, Maria. Taking a run-up. Oh, this is confidence. And a bounce. And a... Oh! Oh! Right in the gulag. <laughs> what is a gulag? Uh, anyway, that was in it. The clock is still ticking as Maria Malinka heads to the final obstacle. The log jam. If you'll excuse the technical jargon, it's two wobbly bits with a spinning thing in between. Prepares for launch. Safe landing. I'm not certain that's helping anyone, really. Here we go. Oh, no! No! So Maria Malinka adopts the familiar swimming method to the stairs and the finished podium in a rather good three minutes and six seconds. That is now the time to beat. Maria! Wow, well, you certainly were rushing around that course. That was fantastic. Yeah, she died. So yeah, absolutely. Замечательно прошла через все препятствия. Yeah, took the words right out of my mouth. I understood that I didn't need it written down. Next to run today's wintry qualifier is 63-year-old Eamon, a play development officer from Belfast. Eamon, how you doing? All the better for seeing you. Oh, you're just so gorgeous. You're more beautiful in real life than I could possibly imagine. I don't know what to say right now. I'm completely flattered. Look at the Irish be with you. Thank you. Yeah, the slick old charmer. Works though. Is this actually safe for a man of Eamon's age? That was no! I don't think he enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm going to call that method the Ulster Cartwheel. Spectacular! <laughs> I love watching other people do that. Diddly, I like Not that. No. Granny's house now for Eamon O Cartwheel. Here we go. Yes. Oh, no, no! Really, just no! Oh, Eamon taking a beating here. Ow! He's a leaping leprechaun! Oh, that'll cheer him up a moment. Well done. Yeah. Eamon now, onto the log jam. Morris jig. Getting jiggled. Onto the second log. Here we go. One leap. Oops! And Eamon O'Cartwheel climbs to the finish in a very respectable 3 minutes 32. Over to Eamon now for some post-run analysis. Sorry, mate. Go on, spit it out. I think I need the second. Ah, don't spit it out. This is 26-year-old floral designer Roxanne. There she is, redesigning some flowers. How well that. Oh, yeah. See, she's pleased with that. Oh, not not please now! <laughs> Roxanne's favourite flowers are peonies and lavender. I'm more of a gyptophilia man myself. I just like the colour. I don't know. Here she is at Granny's house, the first floral designer ever to visit. Come on, Roxanne! Yeah. Oh no! Oh! Gathering herself for a final assault on the log jam. Here we go. Oh, lovely knee slide. Cool. Not to say for sure, but I, I don't know. I think I think she's she's enjoying herself. It... Yes, blooming Roxanne comes home in three minutes fifty-one. This is twenty-eight-year-old DIY store worker Mark. No, he's not a massive walking magnet. Mark collects key rings. No idea how he got through the airport scanner. There will be an investigation, I imagine. They must have shown that. Ah! Hi, Mark. Hi, Amanda. How are you? I'm really good, thanks. Now, Mark, I've got to ask you about your attire. What is going on with this T-shirt? Key rings. Um, I've collected them for about 20 years now. How many have you got? Got well over 2,000. Is this going to be the key to your success, Mark? I think so, definitely. I'll love to get all the way through. That's what I'm going to do, and nobody's going to stop me. I'm Keyring Mark, and I'm going to run rings around this course. Well, good luck, Mark. Fingers are crossed for the Keyring enthusiast. Here we go. He's waiting. Oh, 
he's about to make his mark on the quad bike. No choice in this next bit. Yes, look at that. Actually, if you watch carefully, look, he's frozen in midair. You see? Oh, that's magnificent. If Mark wins Winter Wipeout, he's going to use the prize money to build his own obstacle course in the UK. I'd advise against. Ow! 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 <laughs> no, scratch that. He'll need the money to put his leg back on the right way around. Granny delivering quite a beating to Mark there. Key rings or not. Logjam now, and Winkeeper Mark is looking pretty quick, actually. On to the first. Good start. Careful. Steady. Come on, Mark. Yeah. Oh. It's getting quite a jiggly. Here we go. He's onto the second log. I know. He's immediately off the second log. Oh. And Mark earns himself a commemorative key ring as he climbs to the finish in 3 minutes 12. That is worth a dance. Read his mark on the qualifier. Oh, that's good. Now that, that is that is good roboting. The look on his face says it all. That's probably the best one yet. This is Hannah. She's not a mathlete because that job doesn't exist. She's a maths teacher. This is really hard, Hannah, but so is the winter wipeout qualifier. I've calculated every angle. I've worked out the trajectory of jumping and... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm good at maths, me. Here we go. <laughs> that was one serious equation. Time for a maths-related replay. There you see the old drum falls like that. This drum's velocity plus mass equals lots of flips and a splash. You see, maths can be fun. That's a parabola. Is it, I don't know. Is that an umbrella? Uh, Hannah Mathematic climbs up to the log jam. What's the square root of shattered? <laughs> That's where she is right now. Here we go. Oh, made that look easy. Hang on. And, and no, no. Forgot to carry the two. But this is fast. Two minutes 44, the quickest so far today. This is Kent coach driver Rio, and he's got a special skill. No clues yet. Oh, it could be that, is it? No, no. My name is Rio, and I'm dancing in the sand. No, it's not that either. Now, Rio, you do look like a fun, happy guy. Um, do you have some fun, happy hobbies? Yes, I'm secretly a dancer. No, like dancing as a hobby, you know. <laughs> what kind of dancer are you? Um, I can do face dance, uh, juggling my belly dance, and like. Hang on, the face dance. Uh, it's like funny random face. I like, like. Let me see. Like that. <laughs> like, oh, scary face. Good luck out there. Even though I've only just heard of face dancing, I think I'm a fan. Here we go! Huh? <laughs> Whilst Rio makes his way to Granny's house, there's just time for a face dance intermission. Ah, that's good work. I'm not sure. I think that's a face rumba, is it? Very classical. Mm -hmm. Right, face dancer takes on face smasher. Oh, yeah. A shoulder full of pie followed by a face full of door. Double whack. Yes. Well, I do see a few of those face dancers going on there. Yeah, that was good. Stop it now. Just four of the uh, special moves. Rio to the log jam. No face dancing here. Probably saving up for a big facey finish. Here we go. Under the first. Ow. Oh. Drive it on home. Oh, this is close now. Oh, yes. Must have a spectacular face move for that. Oh. Hannah Mathematic tops the first snowboard with Maria Malinka and Wingkeeper Mark in second and third. 
Face Dancer Rio's fourth, Eamon O'Cartwheel's fifth, and Blooming Roxanne in sixth. But with 14 contestants still to come, that could all change. Michael's next. He's from North London and he's a project manager in IT. And I'll bet his office Christmas parties is fun. Ooh, so what kind of fancy moves do you have then in general in life? Well, I can jerk. Good for you. Woo! Right, here we go. Settle down. Oh, for a big chap, Michael's certainly got some air. What are they put in that barrel? It's... There he is. Oh. Now, Michael's quite a mover, according to Michael. Can he shimmy past Granny's house? Can he? Oh, oh, double pie. Ah, you see, there's the dummy. And then follows up with a real thing. Yep. Oh, dear. So, a brief splash and then up the steps for round two. Look out for Tevez the dog. Oh, oh did I mention the door? I didn't. Look out for the... Too late. Sweet moves, though. Looking good up until that point. OK, smooth mover Mike to the big red ball. He's going for it. He's going for it. He's going for it. Oh. Ow. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Launched himself off the travelator into a mid-air split on ball two. You see? Ah, that might have hurt a bit. Yeah, I think it did. Sadly, Michael did himself a mischief, which is just a nice way of saying it really hurt Then he had to withdraw from the competition. Now, I'm no doctor, but here's my diagnosis. Jerking strain. Perhaps the course will be kinder to a trained athlete. Well, here she is. This is Mika, a star athlete from Wales. Mika can run 100 metres in 11.8 seconds, so by that reckoning, this will be a 25-second qualifier. I'm a sprinter and these are my tracks, and all you men better watch your back. She is a bit meek, is Mika, but never fear, this human dynamo means business. Here we go. Wow! Oh, it says here she doesn't like getting her hair wet. Oh, well, that's a worry, because she's going to. Look, yeah, no choice. Wet hair. Granny's house now. Uh, I, I forgot that 100 meter races don't normally feature people getting smashed in the face with a pie. Pity. Would have been useful practice. Mika to the balls now. 11.8 seconds. Oh, no. oh. Oh. Oh, she's screaming. Oh, no. Oh, mm. So close. Log jam now. No, no, don't do that. It's the form, so... Come on, Mika. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh! Oh! Ah, poor Mika. She's not having a great time. So, Meek Mika reaches the finish line in three minutes, seven. No records broken, and more importantly, no jerk strain. It's a relief. This is Kim. She's a preschool supervisor who likes to laugh. There you go. Do you do anything at all that's uh, that's helped you to get in shape for this uh, monstrosity out here? I did do some baked bean can training. Oh, yeah. How did that go? Not very well. How many cans of baked beans? Two. Did you eat them afterwards? Yeah, of course. This baked bean workout seems like my kind of exercise. I'll give that a shot. Thousand and two. Thousand and three. Mm. Prepare for a bean-powered launch. <laughs> oh, how impressive! <laughs> Straight up, and then straight down. Gravity doing all the work. Beautiful. Oh, Kim! It's all in the aerodynamic hot pants. Now here's where the bean can training will pay off. Granny's house won't know what's hit it. Oh. Eduardo and Eduardo helping Kim find her bean fuel stride again. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Time for the balls. Oh. Oops. Oh. 
Bean Power and Hot Pants now take on the logs. Yeah. She's standing up right. Yeah. Oh, oh face plant. <laughs> Not anymore. But Kim's still on there. Go on, Kim. Come on. Oh, well. Looks like baked bean lifting isn't the answer after all. But look at her go. Maybe needed a few more hours with the baked beans. Spangly pants. Well, nevertheless, Bean Powered Kim does finish in 6 minutes and 12. Well done, her. Well done. <laughs> this is Claire from Bury. She's a former gymnast, and while she's getting in position on her blob, I'm getting in position on mine. I'm going to be brilliant at this. Yeah, it's going to work. How hard did it go? <laughs> Claire is leaving the atmosphere. This is amazing. Claire's not the only high flyer today, of course. She flew nearly as high as I did. How high was it really? Go on. Really? This is Southampton netball enthusiast, Vanessa. <laughs> Getting a netball's eye view of the planet. Then 18-year-old Exeter student, Oscar. He's got a very high IQ. And an even higher blob rating. Look at him go! And Colchester Aviation Insurance Broker, Tim. Conducting a high altitude risk assessment. Nice, good work. There really have been some genuinely amazing aerobatic feats today. Ah, but here's the highest flyer of them all. Claire is just re-entering the atmosphere. Oh, that was some landing. I'm pretty sure that's cheating, actually. Anyway, one small step left, and she has done it. Here we go. And that is the fastest so far today. So Interstellar Claire is joined by Hannah Mathematic and Tim Eyre in second and third. Meek Meekers in fifth. Oscar Performance and Netball Nessa are seventh and eighth and things are looking precarious for bean-powered Kim. This is Paul. He whitens people's teeth in Carefilly. Well, I am Butsy. You know where I'm coming from? What's occurring? Oh, no, you're probably not listening to what I'm saying. It's, it's hypnotising, isn't it? Looks like he's on a stag do for one. <laughs> <laughs> Carefully does it, Paul. Oh, yes, how are you? Well, thank you very much, Amanda, yes. A ball away from sunny Wales, Carefully. And I'm a big red ball, and uh, when one has to show what one's got. I can see exactly what you've got in that outfit, Paul. Very nice, isn't it? <laughs> big Red Paul is back in the valley of the blob. Oh, oh misfire. <laughs> Where's his head gone? Where has his head gone? It's gone. Is it supposed to do that? After the anticlimactic launch, Paul's found his head and is on his way. He's our big red Paul. OK, careful, careful. <laughs> now, Granny doesn't like Welsh people. Then again, she doesn't really like any people. It's just people she likes. And well, the man in red lycra is back for more. Oh! Ow! Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, it was actually under the door. Good rhythm. The big moment has arrived. Big Red Paul takes on the Big Red Balls. Which is the best ball? Yeah. Un unsurprisingly, it was the balls. It was his. And Big Red Paul comes home in a time of 5 minutes, 22 seconds. Paul! 
I'll tell you what, Tom Jones, Anthony Hopkins, and now another famous Welshman. Come on, Dragon! Oh, where's the Dragon? Ah. This is 44-year-old John from Sunbury on Thames. Preparing for liftoff. Here we go. Oh, nice! It's a nice one! John loves cherries. He runs his own business juicing cherries. There's nothing this man doesn't know about cherries. What's going on? I'm the cherry man. I'm the who's the cherry man? I think you're the cherry man. Who's the cherry man? What's the dealio with all the cherryos? What's going on? I'm the who's the cherry man? Uh, is that true? Uh, uh, yeah, you could say that. You could say that. I'm the cherry man. You will be the cherry on the top of this course, then, will you? I certainly will do. Yeah, I'm the cherry man. Yeah, I think he likes cherries, doesn't he? He does. John the cherry man to Granny's house now. Now I wonder if Granny's got a uh, cherry pie prepared for him. Maybe. He goes. Don't know. That was a pieing. That's different entirely. Maybe those cherry-coloured gloves didn't really help. Wow, look at this cherry fueled 40-something go. He could be about to score the fastest time of the day. Just one jump away. This is it. Oh, yes. John the Cherry Man has reached the top of the cherry tree in two minutes, 14 seconds. Now, meet Debbie. She's a fitness instructor. Uh -huh. Then there's Gemma. She's in dentistry, horse dentistry. And Joe, she's in PR. Together, these three are the in crowd. I'm Northern and I'm Welsh! Mm, incorrect. Joe is from Reading. Here we go. <laughs> yes, insane! Here's Gemma, intercontinental ballistic missile. And Debbie. In A&E, probably. I, I, it's kind of hurt. That's fantastic. <laughs> to watch, probably not to do. There they are, all in slow motion. Now here's Gemma. Oh, yeah. In the drink. And Debbie now, in the face. Joe just in. Good barefoot action from Joe. Well done. I'm Northern and I'm well hot. Ah. No! Ooh. Oh no, what was that? Inglorious. <laughs> Gemma the horse dentist to the logs. Oh, oh. Hanging on by the skin of her teeth here. <laughs> What is it you do? I'm a horse dentist, Amanda. It is a quite dangerous job. I put my hand into the horse's mouth, so I do. And the horse's teeth go right back to the eye, so I am up to my elbow. Gemma, that is absolutely disgusting. Here we go. Oh, hang on. No. Oh, right in the molars. Here's Debbie picking her mouth. That was the wrong moment. And Joe. Noggin! Wow, Debbie wins the in-off with a time of 2 minutes 34. Joe is close behind in 2 minutes 50. But Gemma, the horse dentist, scores third place in the in-crowd off. Just two competitors left and this is Ross from Ipswich. Check out the unique hat, scarf, sweatband, Bermuda shorts and leotard combo. <laughs> Who would you liken yourself to in life, Ross? Well, I'm, uh, I'm in a very select group, the Five Foot Five Club with Tom Cruise and Alan Sugar. I'm probably pretty much a slap bang in the middle of the two. You know, the looks and charm of Tom Cruise, but the business sense of Alan Sugar. I've got the best of both worlds. Tom Cruise, Alan Sugar, and maybe just a whiff of TV Mallet. Na, 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 na. Ooh, ah, don't see me. Uh, no, I think he might be fired. <laughs> <laughs> he got fired, all right. There you go. Birthday, 
So, Ross to Granny's house now. Oh, there he is. Past the pie and the door. Oh, but not the dog. Yeah, with that below par performance, Ross is surely heading for the boardroom. Just four balls and two contestants remain. Although one's still limbering up, so I'll focus on fluorescent sugar wannabe Ross. Here it goes. Ooh, pretty good! Surely he's redeemed himself in the eyes of Lord Sugar with that effort. Best ball performance of the day. You're fired. Ross's qualifier journey is almost complete. He's looking incredibly quick, though. Oh, here we go. One more jump. Yes! Yes! The Ross's search for qualifier domination has come to an end. Two minutes, eight seconds, best of the day. Ross, you're hired. Last contestant of the day, hoping to make some headlines of his own, it's Dorset journalist, Tom. In the words of Taylor Winton, bring on the ball! Bring on the ball! <laughs> Let's bring on the balls, it was more bring on the belly flop, really, there will be a headline. Granny's house now, time for a bit of doorstepping. Breaking news, Tom has arrived at Granny's house. Oh no, there'll be another headline. Hmm. Time to wrap up this story. Tom's onto the log, but he needs to beat 3 minutes 13 to qualify for the next round. Make headlines. Terrible news, Tom has missed out on qualifying by seven seconds. Can you really quickly write me the headline for what's just happened to you right now? Tom fails to make a splash in Argentina. Mm, I prefer that one. So, the final snowboard looks like this. Ross Not Fired sits at the summit, Interstellar Claire in fourth, Gemma the Horse Dentist in eighth, and just scraping through our Meek Mika, Rinkeeper Mark and Oscar performance. So it's time to say a tearful cheerio to the eight that didn't make it. This is a sad moment for qualifier lovers because that marks the end of the qualifier. But it's good news for ski lift lovers because that's coming up next. Winter Blunderland lovers should feel excitement starting to grow as that'll be happening in a bit. And lovers of the wipeout zone, please hang on in there. You haven't wait a while yet. But lovers of the little graphics bit someone's made to herald the arrival of the ski lift, your time is now. Here are some ski lift fun facts. There are precisely 12 contestants, 12 little plinths and 12 handles to hang from. The whole apparatus rotates like a merry-go-round. Things are made less merry by the counter-rotating scary ski poles which get steadily higher and higher. Fall into the water and you are out of the game for good. The last five ski lifters left hanging go through to the next round. Winter Wipeout, do you know what the contestants like best about Ski Lift? Absolutely nothing. Are you all ready? Three, two, one. Mm -hmm. 
pitching a ski lift today are fastest in the qualifier, Ross not fired. Okay, good point. Eloquently made. Mm hmm. You can stop now. Then there's John the cherry man. I'll be the last cherry hanging off this tree. Yeah, he loves cherries. I'm the cherry man. Joe in PR, Hannah Mathematic, and Maria Malinka. Watch out, boys, because this Russian rocket is going to lift off. Yeah. Gemma in dentistry, Oscar performance, and Meek Mika. I'm going to be running rings around everybody. Interstellar Claire, Tim Air, Debbie in fitness, and ringkeeper Mark. Hopefully, all my key rings are going to keep me hanging around for a little while yet. The snow is falling, but who'll be first to join it? Remember, only the final five left hanging can go through to the next round. Snowy carousel of joy begins. And there they go. All Mark's in trouble straight away. Oh, no, it's an early bath and an early flight home oh, for Mark. He got caught in his ring. Ringkeeper Mark took a massive body blow from the second scary ski pole. I'm sorry to see him go. Bad luck. I think my mum and dad will be very pleased with me. Very pleased for giving it a go. I'm very pleased with myself for giving it a go. I'm very pleased that you're very pleased, Mark. Well done. OK, next six to topple are out of the competition as well. There's Jo in PR off her podium. Oh! And in. That's the end of the road for Jo. Oh no, Jo! I fell off. Apparently my dive was perfect though and looked really good, so I'm quite happy about that. She got sent into a spin and just couldn't hold on. That was tough. Bad luck. So back to the game and there's Ross not fired, making it look easy. Oscar oop, making it look difficult, but he's stayed on safe for now. Debbie in fitness takes a hit. Oh, that's Oscar. Wow, he's... Oh, he's in. Oscar winning performance from Oscar. This manoeuvre rarely seen. The stylish exit from Oscar. I held on for a bit, but not long enough. Nine still hanging. Only five can go through. Oh, Mika! Meet Mika making a fuss, but still on. Debbie in fitness is in trouble. Hannah as well. Oh, is that Debbie dunked? I oh, whoever it was, Hannah's joined them. <laughs> they are dropping like snowy flies. Debbie got things started by smashing into Interstellar Claire, who amazingly managed to stay on. Then Hannah got an all-in-one back massage and opted for the plunge. Oh, dear. When the sweeper arm hit me in the stomach, that was it. I was down. I was swinging about everywhere, and the next thing I knew... Right, well, if I've kept count correctly, the next two to fall are out of winter wipe. Oh, Maria! Maria getting a wallop. Oh, that's good Russian toughness. That's what that is. Oh, everyone's getting a pasting now. Maria is down and out. For you, Maria. No. One more, guys! Just one more! Ski pole's getting higher now. Oh, oh Ross! Oh, no! Ouch. Oh, this is on a knife edge. It's Claire now. I keep on. I can't see a way back for Claire now. But, yeah, Claire is the last to be eliminated. I am a little bit disappointed because I could see myself being in the wipeout zone, but... I could see her in traction after that wallet. It's just that's the game, isn't it? So... So, five contestants remain to play for the dubious honour of being last man hanging. They are Gemma, Tim, Mika, John and Ross. Ski poles up somewhere around ear height now. They're all through to the next round, but no one is letting go. It's for honour, if not glory. Oh, that's Gemma, and she's staying on. Oh! Oh, 
Oh, John the Cherry Man's gone. And Ross too. Gemma flying about again. Miki, you got a bit of something on your... Oh, never mind. Not on air. Yeah, oh, sorry. Just Tim Air and Gemma in dentistry left. And they're both in the air now. But Gemma's finally let go of her bar, so Tim is today's last man hanging. A superb effort. Amazing scenes here at Ski Lift. This is a sad moment for ski lift lovers because that marks the end of the ski lift. But it's good news for, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not going through all that nonsense again. I just, I am a professional, you know. I've done documentaries on things. I wrote a book. It wasn't all pictures. Not that you'd have read it, Philip Steins. Right, time now for Winter Blunderland. That could be nice to me now. It's just you've already done it, haven't I? Winter Blunderland goes something like this. Spin, spin, spin. Then dash over the knobbly, slidey course, trying to avoid the giant ice cubes thrown by the stroppy skiers. The game is played twice, and each time the last contestant to cross is eliminated. That leaves the three wipeout zone finalists. To me, winter means long walks in the countryside, snuggling up in front of a log fire and watching contestants get punched in the mush. Mmm, it's winter blunderland. Are you all ready? No! Well, I am. Three, two, one. Here's a refresher course on who's about to blunder. He loves cherries. It's John the Cherry Man. I'm the Cherry Man. He's a high flyer. It's Tim Air. She's a meek athlete. It's Meek Meeker. He got hired earlier. It's Ross Not Fired. And she's a horse dentist. It's Gemma in Dentistry. So the contestants speak to a halt. Let the blundering begin. Yeah. And there they go. Ross. Ooh, nice face plant. Well done. Cherry Man is first to the Frosty Flipper, straight onto the crankshaft for him. Those ice cubes offering extra niggle on an already niggleful course. Ooh, looking good. Ooh, ooh. There's Mika. Ooh, straight across. Ice cubes just bouncing off her. Ross and Gemma, neck and neck. Oh no, Ross is in, and Gemma's in too. Synchronized swim back to the start. John making excellent progress. Just the Roterotator and Iceberg to go. Ooh, looks like he's struggling here. Uh-oh. <laughs> he's slipping back. And here's Mika already. Oh, no, he's in. I think he panicked. That means Mika has stolen the lead. Oh, 100-meter sprint. This is easy. Oh, leaps onto the iceberg, but it's this next jump that really counts. Hold tight, Mika. Take your time. The longer she stays, the dizzier she'll get. Doesn't know where she is. She's in Argentina, isn't she? Yeah. She's done it! Safely through to the next heat! They're popular with the fans there. Here's Tim, finally. Oh, that was underwhelming. John, now back onto the Roterotator. Whoa, what? <laughs> that was ambitious. There is literally nobody on the course right now. Welcome to Winter No Wipeout. John, back on. There goes Ross as well, and he's looking good, which is hard to do, crouched on some foam. Ice Cube incoming. Seems we've spurred him on. Third time lucky for John. That's it, John! Ross oh. is nipping at John's heels. One more jump now for John. Oh, that's Ross in! And that's John the Cherry Man through. Ross, back to the start of the Roterotator. Come on, Ross! Oh, 
You have to respect the stroppy skier's precision chucking there. Oh, there we go, onto the iceberg. One more jump now. And he's through. What a crowd pleaser. That means either Gemma or Tim are about to be eliminated. Oh, look at this. She has overtaken Tim. This is Gemma's first go on the Rotera Tater. But she makes it look like a doddle. Desperate times for Tim now. Is he about to be eliminated? Come on, Tim! Oh, it's a two-horse race. Yes, he is. Because Gemma is through and Tim is out of the competition. I like it. Now, there's a lot of love in that crowd there. Yeah, it made me too much. Tim, oh my goodness. She was so far behind, you almost won several times. What on earth happened? Uh, that's just a really unlucky, unfortunate. So here they go again. Heat two, the decider. One of these four is about to be eliminated and miss out on today's wipeout zone by the tiniest of margins. Frustrating. sometimes easy to forget they all start this game very dizzy. Gemma's just beaten that buckle to start. John and Mika both onto the flipper. John edging ahead, is he? Oh. John just accepting those ice cubes. Just getting on with it. Pushing on his old nemesis, the Roterotator now. Oh, oh, Mika. Mika's in trouble. Oh. John's obviously learned from his mistakes. And he's straight through to the wipeout zone. I want some of that cherry juice. It obviously works. Look at him go. Gemma bobbing about in the water. Mika on the crankshaft. But she's been overtaken by Ross. Can he snatch the second spot in the wipeout zone? He can, and very quickly indeed. Things looking dicey for Gemma now. Her only hope is that Mika mucks it up, but she's looking comfortable. Oh, onto the iceberg. Just one jump to go. Come on! Superb! Mika grabs the third and final spot in today's wipeout zone, which sadly means Gemma the horse dentist has fallen at the final hurdle. Gemma! You quite literally couldn't get past the first hurdle! I couldn't get past the first hurdle. That was a little bit hard. Listen, well done for getting this far. We'll see you later on, OK? OK, thank you. I've just received another top secret fax with some amazing news in it. Not really supposed to say this, but it's about the three wipeout zone finalists. Apparently, it's going to be John, Mika, and Ross. This is dynamite. Where do they get this stuff from? They must have someone on the inside, a vault. An Englishman, Scotsman, and a Welshwoman tackle the winter wipeout zone. Just sounds like the start of a joke. So I've competed for Wales in the 100 metres, but now I'm going to be competing for Wales in the wipeout zone. I just can't believe that I am here facing the wipeout zone. I really want to win this. John, you know, me and him have been at the top throughout all the courses today. I know he's really up for this. John's weakness is that he's a lot older. <laughs> He might find it a bit of a struggle. It's been a long day and he's probably ready for bed now. <laughs> Mika, she's a professional athlete. She is so fast. She's a sprinter. She is very, very determined. But as you got it, to beat me. I'm the jerry man. Ross and John were first and second in the qualifier and I was like 10th. I think they'll find it easier to compete against each other. I'm going to have to catch up and sprint. As I've always said, I'm pretty much smack bang in the middle of Tom Cruise and Alan Sugar. Charm and charisma with a great business mind, and I'm going to have to use every inch of that tonight. But uh, almost like Cruise's Mission Impossible, there's going to have to be a lot of spirit and fight to get through this. But I will, and at the end of this, I will be hired.
<laughs> I'm the cherry man. This is it. Either John, Mika, or Ross are about to become Winter Wipeout Champion, return home with the trophy and £10,000. It's the Battle of Britain on the Winter Wipeout Zone tonight. We've got a Scot, an Englisher and a Welshie. It's going to be emotional and John is the first to go. John the Cherryman prepares himself for liftoff. This is for Cheeky Chocolate Charlie and the Cherries! Come on! Oh, nice bit of mid-air running there. Tricky. Keen to start. And he's in. John must swim as quickly as possible to the slippery North Pole. Come on, John! This is a strong start. Now John must climb the icy stairs, each one jiggling violently. Look at him go, already at the third! Fueled by cherries! Oh, that cherry juice he drinks is, is clearly helping, just the descent now. He's made it to the ice picks. This is a quick run. And you... Oh, no. That was just ridiculous. In his quest for a fast run, John forgot that timing is also very important. He... Oh. Come on, John. Losing valuable seconds and strength. Oh. Oh, no. His energy reserve's running low now. John looks to be in trouble. I cannot bear it. You cannot underestimate how difficult it must be to haul yourself up a ladder in those conditions. Finally, John has made it to the top. He's got to judge this jump correctly now. Come on, John. Such a strong start. Yeah, he's made it. Oh, please don't fall again. I cannot bear it if he falls again. He just needs to get up. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, bless his cherry picking socks. Oh, it's another ladder now. John must have been destroyed by all this climbing. It's the snowflakes. Very, very few people have ever made it over these. Oh, no. No. Oh. Heartbreaking. A final climb to the finish podium for John. Who knows this isn't good. This has got to hurt. This is brave. Five minutes, one second is the time to beat. Oh, John. How you doing, my darling? Oh, can I do it again? The determination in you to succeed was next to none. Thank you, Amanda. I can tell you that you did that in a very fruity time of five minutes and one second. We've got Mika up next, but yours is still the time to beat, John. Uh, okay, okay, <laughs> just sit down. Right, take a deep breath, let's watch. Mum. So Mika is the next to fly. The finish line is in sight and I'm sprinting towards it. Ooh. And there she goes. Great dive from this Welsh athlete. Did you hear that little squeak like a mouse? So five minutes, one is the target. Mika quickly to the North Pole. Now let's see if she can do this in 11.8 seconds, eh, John? Onto the icy stairs. Now Mika's athleticism should help her here. Onto the second step. There she goes. Motivational talk. Mika slower than John at this point. Come on, Mika! Nearly at the summit. Come on! Well, she's steadily reached the top. Bit of jiggly. Now for the tricky descent. Oh. Squeaker, Mika. Just one more jump to the ice picks. Yes. Come on, Mika. Past the first. Screaming. Oh. Come on, Mika. And the second. Oh, she's been hit! 
but Mika has stayed on. Now the all-important jump onto the bicycles. Oh, Mika! Go, no, Mika! Picking her moment. You can! Yes, you can. You can do it. You can do it. She did it. Ah, oh, brave. Mika is at the middle. Running. And she's made it past the bicycles. And that's brought her some valuable seconds back. The impossible snowflakes now. Oh no, living up to their name. Mika didn't even get a grip on that snow-covered flake. It's a swim to the finish podium now. And then a climb. And if Mika makes it to the top in one go, she will have beaten John. Come on, Mika! And she has, in 4 minutes 29, Mika's is now the time to beat. Mika, my lovely, lovely girl. How are you feeling, darling? <laughs> <Bit wide. laughs> So were you a little bit petrified out there? <laughs> Just a tad, yeah. Well, listen, you needed a personal best in order to beat John, who was absolutely great. Yeah. And you've done it, Mika. You were faster. Sorry, John. You weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> well, Ross is up next. Let's watch. He is just about to be fired. For you, my baby boy. See you soon. It's Ross not fired. Wow. Terrifying start. This looks quick straight away from Ross. There he goes with his little legs. <laughs> Dead is himself now for the icy stairs. He's on. Hurling himself on the first obstacle. And he's on to the second. Now the third. Oh, hold on, Ross. Hold on. I... No, he oh, has fallen. fallen. And we know that Ross, Ross is going to have, have to hit the stairs, the stairs again. We join you. The fastest in the qualifier, so if anyone can pull this back, it's him. He's making those look easy now, straight onto the ice picks. Suddenly in control again. Timing. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 disaster! It's that third pick that seems to get them every time. So to climb, back up the ladder. Oh, he's struggling. Come on, Ross. Oh, these are the hardest stairs to get up! Get up, get up, get up! Come on. No, oh, no! Oh, no! Oh. It looks like Ross just ran out of energy. Oh, this is heartbreaking. Ross just keeps falling off that ladder as the minutes tick by. His challenge is over. Oh, but you've got to give it to him. He just keeps on going. That's some determination right there. Wow. Oh, I can hardly watch. Come on, Ross. The concentration is every ounce of strength he has left. Oh, look at that. He's made it. It took nearly four minutes to get up those stairs, but he made it. Wow. He's still going. Oh, he was not going to give up. Just stayed on there. Come on, Ross. Oh, no. No, poor Ross. Oh, this really hasn't been his day. Obviously, Ross's challenge is long gone, but he keeps going. Uh oh, on the snowflakes, off the snowflakes, he's fallen again. Look, the steely nerve and determination. How brave is Ross? One final climb now. I hope he brings his ordeal to an end with one attempt here. And he has 9 minutes 13, but he did it. 
and you've got to admire that. Ah, oh, what a hit. Ross, come on out here, my darling. Oh my goodness. Ross, Mika, I said tonight that this was going to be an emotional night. And I'll tell you what, I was not wrong. That was the most incredible, the bravest, the most determined run I have ever seen. But there can only be one Winter Wipeout champion. And Ross, I'm afraid you just weren't quick enough. Mika, you are the Winter Wipeout champion! So after that epic wipeout zone, Welsh athlete Mika Moore takes the gold. Which is actually not gold, it's kind of silvery in colour. Nevertheless, it's hers along with the £10,000 prize. Some people are going to say, will there ever be another Winter Wipeout champion again? And to them, I say, yeah, obviously about this time next week when there'll be a bit of this. Some of this. And then this guy will win. Oh, yeah. So, until then, from Amanda and me, it's goodbye. <laughs>